Hello and welcome to Clinical Exam Series with Dr. Piro. Today we are going to be looking at clacking or fever. I want you to note the following when you are interacting with patients. 1. Do not use technical terms when you are interacting with patients as you might confuse them. Patients and diseases do not read our textbooks. Also, in the exams, it's better to use closed-ended or semi-closed-ended questions such as do you have fever than open-ended questions like how do you feel. When we interact with patients on the world in real life, we can ask those kind of questions. But in the exam when you are time-bound, it is better to ask closed-ended questions. When you clock fever, these are the questions you should ask. When did this start? For how long has this fever been? Is the fever high? As in, is your body hot or your body is just warm? In which case the fever is low. You should also ask for associations of the fever with the fever. Is there chills and rigors, in which case the patient is shivering and feeling cold? You can also go ahead to ask about the pattern of the fever from the history. Is the fever always present or is it present in some times of the day? Now we'll go to patterns of fever subsequently. However, the normal body temperature is an axillary temperature of 36.6 degrees to 37.5 degrees in adult medicine. When the temperature is greater than 37.5 degrees, it is regarded as fever, an axillary temperature. Fever is also described as a rectal temperature greater than 38 degrees centigrade. An oral temperature greater than 37.8 degrees centigrade is also re regarded as fever. When the temperature is 35 degrees centigrade to 36.5 degrees centigrade is regarded as subnormal temperature. When it is less than 35 degrees centigrade, it is regarded as hypothermia. Fever of 37.6 degrees to 38 degrees is regarded as low-grade fever. From 38.1 degrees to 39 degrees centigrade is regarded as moderate fever. And from 39.1 degrees and above is regarded as hyperparexia. Now to patterns of fever. When the fever is present, when the temperature is elevated above normal and the fever is present all through the day without a fluctuation of up to of up to one degree centigrade it is regarded as continuous fever for example when you have a temperature of 38.5 degrees all through the day and the lowest you record is 38.2 degrees the fluctuation is not up to one degree centigrade therefore we call this kind of fever a continuous fever when the fever is present in all times of the day with a fluctuation of equal to or greater than one degree centigrade it is regarded as remittent fever remittent fever when the fever is present at only some times in the day some points of the day it is regarded as intermittent fever intermittent fever is further classified as quotidian tertian quartan or pelepstin a quotidian pattern of fever is when there is alternating days of fever with days without fever. So 24 hours you have fever and then the next day you don't have fever. And then the next day you have, next 24 hours you have fever and onwards like that. Alternating days of fever without fever is regarded as quotidian fever. When there is a day of fever, two days without fever, a day of fever, another two days without fever is regarded as tertian pattern of fever. When there is a day of fever, three days without fever, a day of fever, and three days without fever, subsequently, it is regarded as a quartan pattern of fever. Pelepsin fever is when there is three to ten days of fever, alternating with three to ten days without fever. This pattern is usually typical in Hodgkin's lymphoma. As a final word on fevers, I want to tell us about how fever stops or how fever resolves. When a fever resolves suddenly after an, an, an intervention with a drop to the baseline temperature, it is regarded as crashing of fever by crisis. When a fever gradually returns to the baseline temperature, it is regarded as crashing of fever by lysis. Fever crashes by lysis. Fever crashing by lysis is typical of typhoid fever. There are other videos on clacking of other symptoms and examinations. 
share this with your classmates if you enjoy it thanks for watching